Hello and welcome. My name is Ian Dolphin and I'm the Executive Director of the Aperio Foundation. Aperio is a non-profit organization dedicated to developing and sustaining open source software in support of learning, teaching and research. Open source software doesn't carry the licensing costs of commercial proprietary software and allows higher education funding to be focused on mission and on innovation around that mission. We don't do that alone. We have active partnerships with the ASAP Portai Consortium in France and the LAMP Consortium in North America. So we bring together some 170 institutions and commercial partners in a global network sustaining innovation and education. Aperio has around 18 software communities producing a range of software solutions for education. Our speaker today, Dr. Charles Severance, is active in two of those communities, Sakai and Sugi. Chuck is also the principal architect of IMS Global's Learning Tools Interoperability, now LTI Advantage specification. So here to tell us why the newly launched LTI Advantage spec is going to make a difference is Dr. Severance. Over to you, Chuck. Thanks, Ian. Is my microphone working? It is loud and clear. OK. OK. So uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. I'm sure we'll get a lot more people on the, the replay of this. Um, so the title of this is the next big thing in LMS integration. I mean, LTI, Learning Tools Interoperability 1.1, is almost 10 years old now and has profoundly changed um, how teaching and learning happens. LTI tools are now as much part of the uh, innovation front for an organization. Um, it, for me as a faculty member, it's hard to go down the hallway and talk to a colleague who isn't using some kind of an LTI tool as a way to you know, be, uh, make the course the way they want it to make. And that's one of the basic problems of learning management systems is that if you build one thing for everybody, uh, then we get sort of nobody quite gets what they want. But with, uh, I mean, I mean, even when I watch how people write uh, uh, assessments for programming courses, they're just a, just a rich, rich set of choices available, and everybody seems to choose something different. But I think that's great. So, um, LTI Advantage in terms of the scope. So LTI Advantage itself is not really a specification. LTI Advantage is like four specifications, five, yeah, four specifications. Um, and the clever thing that IMS did with LTI Advantage is that they, they said, well, you could certify for these alone, but really we're not gonna give you the cool sticker, the cool LTI Advantage sticker, unless you certify for all of them. That's at least for platforms. So platforms, LMS is like Sakai, Blackboard or Canvas, in a sense have to do all of the above. Um, and if, if you, at this point, if you were a, a LMS and you said, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the launch and nothing else, then you'd be saw, seen as like not cool. And so IMS two years ago now, I think it's been almost two years, came up with this idea that we would bundle these together and certify them as a unit. And that's why you hear LTI Advantage, even though LTI Advantage itself is not a spec. There's LTI 1.3, which we'll talk about, deep linking which is what we used to call content item. And so that was a, um, a LTI 1.1 concept. Deep linking is using LTI 1.3 security. Uh, names and role provisioning services. And this is basically a way for a tool to get a entire roster of a course once at least one person is launched from that course. And so it's we've had a membership extension um, and some LMSs uh, used it, but for tool providers, uh, they, they, it was, there was just not enough reason to use a Sakai extension to get the roles and um, groups because then you'd have to build one for Blackboard and one for Canvas and one for D2L. So people tended to use the, the extensions, but they never could build a tool that would be usable across a lot of systems if they started to depend on roles. And then they would send to themselves, well, we're going to build a tool and it's only going to work on Blackboard because um, we want the roles so badly. And then assignment and grade services, which is probably the biggest deal of all, because historically uh, the biggest knock on LTI 1.1, which was very consciously put in, was the fact that each link got one grade column. And part of that was, if you go back 10 years, LMSs didn't want to give 
tools, APIs into the gradebook in general, they wanted to really kind of ring fence tools so they couldn't create a lot of uh, columns. And we did on purpose in LTI 1, because 1.1, because we wanted something the LMS vendors would actually accept. And if we kind of kept the tools at bay, then um, then we got a much better adoption from learning management systems. And I think that was a tremendous strategy, a good strategy for LTI 1.1. Um, but it's no longer a relevant strategy. I mean, everyone sort of now believes in LTI and believes that it's okay to have an API for a tool to talk to the LMS's data model. I mean, we crossed that bridge in 2012. I mean, everyone thought that was a fine idea, and here we are in 2019, seven years later, and we're like, how come I can't make more gradebook comps? Well, now you can. And the key thing, again, is LTI Advantage is the bundle of all these things. So you, if you're certified for LTI Advantage, you literally must support all of these services, and that's brilliant. And so there are four learning management systems and two tools as of this very minute that are certified. The big four, Sakai, Moodle, Canvas, Blackboard are the big four LMSs. Uh, Desire to Learn is not on that list, although they probably will. Most of these folks, I would say Blackboard is the farthest ahead, followed Moodle and Sakai are probably tied at this point, and Canvas is still working out some things. And I'll talk about some of the challenges later that, that each LMS is facing. But Blackboard is probably going to actually have it in users' hands faster than any of the others. But by fall of this year, it's likely that every single vendor will have this in their shipping product of the big five. Oops, okay, click that button. So this is also kind of, um, this is the most complex standard in terms of an API standard that, uh, that IMS has ever built. It is the, uh, it's really amazing. Uh, and, and honestly, if we didn't have things like Slack, so I'm showing you a screenshot of the Slack channel for our IMS. It has no proprietary karaoke, which is important, but not proprietary. Um, and But literally for a year or year and a half, we have had uh, Blackboard, Desire to Learn, Sakai, Unicon, Moodle, um, and Canvas and IMS staff in a Slack channel. And so people who would be implementing the code uh, would go into the Slack channel and say, what? What's going on here? And then Eric Preston of Blackboard would just pop up and say, oh, I, how, this is how I did it. Or somebody from Learning Objects would pop up and say, well, I, that you actually can do that in Java. You just got to use this other library. So the, um, the amount of help and the, and the speed at which that help was offered, including the IMS staff, is amazing. And, and us unprecedented. And so this is sort of the age of Slack when it comes to standards. Um, and so, so we, we, we did this together. I mean, this was not um, the way LTI 1.1 worked. And I wrote a blog post about this is like Sakai did it. And then like six months later, D2L did it. And then four months later, uh, Blackboard did LTI 1.1. And, you know, that was slow and steady. And of course I have a tattoo to, that <laughs> we get it every couple of months, I get another tattoo. So it is different. It is completely different, and that's really wonderful. So um, you can do your own demo. Uh, someone can type this in. If you go to uh, dev1.sakaicloud.com, that's a copy of Sakai that I maintain uh, that you can log in, and um, and then you can make an account. You can join the site Aperio Webinar. You go into the Lessons tool and click on LMS Test, and you will be able to do LTI uh, 1.3. Um, let me see if I can get that in. Dev1. Put that in the chat. Um, and so I've got another website called test.sugicloud.org, and I have a stock install. And you. The testsugicloud.org is also on Nightly, but that's a 1-1 one, one installate, 1-1 one, one connection. Um, on dev one skycloudcom I have an LTI 1.3. And you could, if you want, while I'm talking, uh, go in ahead and make an instructor, make a home, make your own site, go to Worksite Setup, add lessons and gradebook, and then you could use the deep linking to go to the Sugi store and add the tool called LMS Test, which is what I'm going to show you in screenshots because the the just me doing it 
uh, on uh, Big Blue Button is not all that good. So this is what you'll see when you go there. You will see a lessons uh, pre-built that has LMS test. And when you click on that, you will begin an LTI 1.3 launch process. Uh, got debugging turned on in this particular server. And you can do things like cut and paste these uh, Java web tokens. If you scroll down here, there's the actual Java web token that's going back and forth. Um, even by the time you see this screen, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, which I'm going to talk about uh, coming up. Um, if uh, you, after the launch, you go to this tool that I've built in Sugi called the LMS test tool. And um, the LMS test tool is probably the world's leading um, exerciser of LTI 1.3 and LTI Advantage stuff. I mean, literally you can um, here do all the LTI 1.3 Advantage things. And I've used this with both Canvas, uh, this LMS tool, uh, test tool. Um, it's written in PHP, written in Sugi. I've used it with Canvas and I've used it with uh, D2L. And uh, oh, how do I get rid of that? Okay, get rid of the annotation. So um, to this tool, you can play with it and you can explore by clicking on these buttons and those buttons and you can see the data going back and forth and the kinds of things and you can see it going, I'm getting OAuth 2 tokens. Given that it was written by me and I use it to debug stuff, uh, it has, it's very, very, uh, very wordy. It's not designed for end users, it's designed to exercise APIs. And if you do the instructor one and you go into lessons and then you do add learning app, you can pick the Sugi app store and you're doing a deep link request and response. Again, I've got debugging turned on on all these things. And so you can install tools and then you can launch those tools afterwards. And so uh, dev1.sakaicloud.com uh, allows you to play with all this LTI 1.3 right now. So um, I'll, I'll stop just what a glance at the chat if anyone has any questions at this point, uh, sort of on what it is before I dive into the technical bits. I'll just see if anyone wants to ask a question. Okay, I'll keep an eye on it. I can see the chat while I'm, I'm talking. So if something comes up. So now I'm going to kind of dive in and be a little more technical. So, so the one thing that we started out when we start out to make LTI Advantage. What we started out doing was we started out saying we don't want to use OAuth 1.0, which has been deprecated perhaps for 10 years now. And we wanted to use OAuth 2 and technologies like Java Web Tokens and OpenIDC Connect, the kinds of things that Google and Twitter and GitHub are all using to talk to their APIs. So we wanted to bring it forward. We wanted to use OAuth 2, Java Web Tokens, um, and so this, I'll talk a little bit about each of these technologies. So this, if, if you, um, I don't know if I can draw on this or not, we'll try to draw. So in the old days, you would have a link sitting in an LMS platform and it would click a link and it would post sign data to some tool URL. It was like, click, click. And this was all OAuth 1, all the base string and all that stuff was right, okay. So it is now a lot more com com complex, and there are more things that need to be configured on uh, the two ends. So, um, so the first thing that happens is the when you click on a link, whether it be Piazza or Tsugi or whatever, is there is a specific URL endpoint in each tool called the OpenIDC Connect initialization URL. And this has to do with preventing replay attacks and security, et cetera. And then there's this little bit of data that comes back to Sakai, and there's a little servlet sitting here in Sakai that just bounces it again. So these are all redirects. And then it, once it checks this OpenID Connect response, it actually copies some data from this OpenID Connect response into that LTI 1.3 launch, and then signs it with a private key that uh, Sakai has, and then sends that across as a Java web token. And this, uh, this code on this tool side, this could be Sugi or any other tool, it, it has sent some stuff through this to make sure that it's really coming from the right source. And there's like, they are only a lot of few seconds from here to here. And so there's all this, this is really to add a, a layer of uh, replay attack security. So then it ver verifies at this tool redirect endpoint, there's only one of these. There can be thousands of launch URLs, but this tool redirect endpoint is actually configured as a valid thing over here in the platform. So it validates, validates the public key, uses the public, well, actually, no. It, first, another thing it does is it grabs the public key 
um, from a key set URL in the platform. So the platform has a public key and a private key, and the public key is made available in the key set URL, and the private key is used to sign this thing going across there. Um, so all this stuff is validated, and there's a public key that comes across, it checks all these things, look, 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 look. And then it's like, I am happy with this stuff. It generally sets up a session and then pops a redirect to its own self, right? So this is the ultimate tool. So this could be the map tool or the cats tool or the quick write tool or whatever, dot, 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 dot. So this is not the tool. This is a sort of commonplace in, in OIDC Connect you're not allowed to sort of launch to spray out launches to everything. You're supposed to have a precisely configured uh, redirect endpoint. But from the user's perspective, I mean, at the end of the day, what happens is you click on a thing and you end up on the cat tool. And it's just blink, 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 and away it works. So it's not ultimately from the users all that different, but for developers and system administrators who have to configure all these things into both sides, and I'll show you some screens of that. It's a little more, a lot more complex, but it, it's just copying more things other than a URL key and a secret. You're copying these things as well. So the tool must provide you, here's my initialization endpoint, here's my tool redirect, here's my, well, the target link URI is actually placed underneath this link here. So that's, and I haven't even shown you content item. Content item is pulling these things in. So that's the launch. Let's take a, a bit of a look at how this works. It uses public private keys. Um, and you might think that this is really hard, but um, in a way, PKI, uh, the ed tech market is late to this party. And we found really cool tools and libraries. And it turned out that using libraries for Java web tokens and public private key was the easiest part of all this. Um, and so that's really exciting is now we're using libraries that everyone else is using. When I was working in Sugi, I found that the library to do all the signing in Java Web Token had already been, been included because I'd had Google, I did added support for Google Classroom to Sugi, and the libraries were already sitting there pulled in. I did not add more libraries. I was using this Google Firebase library, so that was cool. This is an example in Sakai of some configuration, right? So you gotta like, oh, you gotta have some public keys and some private keys and some whatever keys, and and there's a lot more to copy back and forth uh, in, in setting things up. And so then the tool, here's Sugi, it's like, oh, okay, here's the key set URL that I'm gonna use, here's the token URL, here's the private key that I'm gonna sign with, here's the public key that I'm gonna check signatures with. And so there's a little more to it, right? And um, the configuration is a little bit more complex. Uh, Java Web Tokens, this is the way that data is sent across, and it is basically a way of serializing and signing JSON. And there's this really cool website called jwt.io that allows you to debug these things. So all the problems that we had about base strings not matching or funky characters, that's really kind of fixed at this point because JWT takes care of all that, and we've had zero interoperability problems with JWTs. Um, and so that's that's pretty cool. So the, depending on is a very solid, easy to use, etc. So there's this cool website, jwt.io. You take these things that if you go back and you pause the launch in Sakai and you scroll down, this like hex gibberish is there and you can actually cut and paste it and then it will decode it for you. And so we, we got like a website that everybody uses to debug these uh, JWTs, even though they look like gibberish, they're all in, uh, encoded and packed and serialized, all these kinds of things. But it's really just, nothing more than some JSON, so a header JSON and a body JSON. So that's really neat. Another thing that's really key about this, uh, cool about this is the concept of PKI key rotation. Um, because of this thing where it actually, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. This part right here where there's this key set URL. So the, the key is not, pre-configured into the tool, the public key of the learning management system is not pre-configured. An ID is passed and then this URL is loaded and then the, the public key comes from a URL, which means that the platform can rotate its public key, change the ID it's sending, and then the tool will get a new public key. So there's no place to like enter the platform's public key. It's all done by this key set URL. So that allows, now I gotta skip back. 
let me skip all the way back where I was it like slide 18. Yeah, it allows key rotation. And so this was a terrible problem in, in uh, LTI-1. If you, if you had a key that got compromised, then you'd have to like call everybody. Here, you literally can go into Sakai and you click and you put a new public key in and like one launch later, that public key is known to everybody because you change the KID on the next launch. This URL has the key ID and it's, it's quite nice. Uh, we don't have key rotation for the things coming from the tool, but that'll probably be shortly. Um, the tool still has one key and manual key rotation, but the LMS launches to, to, the, to the learning uh, tools uh, have automatic key rotation built in and it works really well. And if, if we had a little more time, but we've been working on this so long, we've got to get it out. But if we had a little more time, it would one of the quickest features will probably be key rotation coming back. Um, the launch, I kind of talked about this. It's a series of LTI claims. These, uh, the JSON that it sends might look weird, but we spent a ton of time mapping from LTI 1.1. And if you were to look at the code in Sakai right here, you would see that um, uh, the code comes in and it creates, in effect, an LTI 1.1 launch. And then it, it takes the data that comes out of that and runs it through an LTI 1.3 converter. And that's because the data model is the same. Even though the serialization is different, the data model is the same. And so Sakai has common code base between LTI 1.1 and LTI 1.3, and that it's not separately constructing the entire LTI 1.3, it's actually mapping the LTI 1.1. I introduced a bug in Sakai uh, 19 because of that, because I was testing so much LTI 1.3 stuff in, in Sakai 19. I forgot to go after I got it all done, test the LTI 1.1 stuff, which I had broken. Two lines of code fixed it, but um, it, it's because the code, the 1.1 and the 1.3 shares a ton of code in Sakai. And that actually leads to one of our advantages as I'll talk about in a second. This is what those claims look like. Like I said, it looks very different, but if you look, you see there are all kinds of IDs for users. Um, and other things that are the same, meaning that, you know, the course ID is the same. So you can have be getting a series of LTI 1.1 launches and then start getting LTI 1.3 launches and away you go. Let's see if I can find, this might not have it. Where is, where are we? Where is the user? Yeah, this is an old screenshot. I should get a new one. Where's the user at? Yeah, there's a, there's some, specific things that have been added to this having to do with the LTI 1.1 to 1.3 transition. So now I want to talk about the OAuth 2 services, and this is also really exciting. And so we're using OAuth 2.0 as effectively the security paradigm for these new services, whether they be the uh, membership and roles, groups and roles, or if they are the um, gradebook services. So there is a private and public key, and we don't have key rotation, as I mentioned, but that'll be coming shortly, um, and hands its public key to the LMS. And so it uses a thing where it uses the public key to request a short-lived token. And by short-lived, you usually mean uh, an hour. So you can use this as a bearer token for an hour, and then that expires. And that's it's all signed and has all kinds of secure stuff. And, um, and, and in a sense, these tokens have scopes. The request for the token says, I want a scope that lets me read and write the grade book. I want a scope that says, let me see this, let me see that. And once you get the scopes in here and you got a token that has those scopes that's been approved, then you can send that as a bearer. And it's uh, it, the library support for this is really great. You can just do nothing. Just take a look at the unit tests that I built in Sakai. The interesting thing is how short they are, right? How short the unit tests are and how short these utilities are. So this is the flow that we do when we're building a, um, a, a oops, yeah, when, when we're doing this. So this is names and roles and outcome services using OAuth 2. So the tool has a private key, private key, and the, and the platform has a public key. Yeah, so the tool is about to make a request, but it first needs to get a token. So another configuration. Service endpoints are different um, than token endpoints. And you saw in that little launch stuff, you're giving, you're giving these service URLs as well. So you sign with your public, your private key, you ask up for a token. Now, the interesting thing in OAuth too is there can be some costly efforts. So in Sakai land, this is non-trivial. If you look at the code for this in Sakai land, you see that I've done a bunch of 
costly operations like can this tool read the gradebook? Can this tool write to the gradebook? I do all that here. And then I actually securely sign the token and I put in effect the functions in that token, meaning can read gradebook. And then when that token comes back by checking the signature, I don't have to check the database anymore because I actually checked it once. So the idea is, is that this is sort of a higher cost operation getting the token. And then with the almost zero cost thing, I can just call the service because I know that I gave this token to somebody who had the rights to read and write the gradebook service. And so that means that these service calls and you get like an hour long that you can use that token. And then if the hour expires, you kind of do this one more time. But you could do easily, you know, 10 or 100,000 API calls that are cheap with one slightly more expensive uh, token. And so that's a real cool feature. And I will admit that when I first saw this picture, I'm like, ooh, yuck, I don't want to do that. And then I realized the efficiency that can be gained. And again, we're, you know, the efficiency can, that can be gained by hoisting the costly things up here and then signing the token and then making this a very cheap operation. It means that you don't, every time you see an API service request, you don't have an expensive operation. And so I think that worked out really very, very nicely. And like I said, this tool called the LMS test tool, that's all, it's a Sugi tool, can hit all these things and you can see the tokens that it's getting and when it's expired and this, that, and the other thing and sending grades with it, talking to the line items, retrieving all the names and roles. So it's a fun little tool that you can do a lot of cool stuff with. And I used it to debug it and others are using it to bug, to debug their uh, systems as well. So these tokens are pretty easy. I've got some URLs in here that you can go into GitHub and see some of the code, both in Java and in um, and in and PHP Sugi, so that you could, if you really wanted to, someone was going to build an LTI 1.3 tool, you might want to take a look at how I did it in Sugi. Um, away you go. And so, um, so a couple of observations. Um, I've already mentioned, I, and I probably will mention a few more times, the cooperation and and mutual support uh, from the vendors to each help each other. There was no sort of there was no win lose in this. Everyone knew that everyone's life would get better. And again, that's a big difference between LTI 1.1 because LTI 1.1 was like taking the, it was like attacking the industry, and they had kind of an initial defensive thing. Um, Sakai was pushing it, and then the vendors didn't welcome it. But eventually they did, and everyone loves LTI 1.1. But the, the the initial reaction was not one of love. Couldn't be farther from the truth in LTI Advantage. Literally, I have helped so many vendors and so many tools do LTI 1.1, but honestly, they were helping me with LTI Advantage. I, I can't take credit for being first in. I got help from Turnitin. I got help from Blackboard. I got help from Learning Objects, um, Canvas. You know, and, and we just helped each other because there would be things that we would know. You'd get a really quick question like, is this really supposed to be this access grant? Yup, it changed two months ago and your code is old, so you got to change it. Okay, thanks, change the code. So I just, big, big shout out to everybody who helped, including the IMS staff. The LMS vendors love LTI Advantage. There is going to be a lot of pressure once this gets out. I mean, you're not seeing this yet, but once this gets out, you're going to see pressure, quick pressure away from LTI 1.1. I mean, the, the LMS vendors don't have it yet, so they're not like saying go away. But when we have it, which I'm going to guess is fall, when it's when it'll be solidly out in the marketplace, every vendor is likely going to push everybody as far away from LTI 1.1 to the extent that some, some vendors are gonna start removing features from LTI 1.1. And part of that is that, you know, there's a lot of vendors that are uncomfortable with the security patterns and practices around LTI 1.1. A lot of their vendors, um, they look at the passwords and a lot of tools use a password of 000 or secret, which was my sample. And so there's a lot of things not to like about LTI 1.1, even though it was a damn good specification, okay? Um, but it is no longer once. And so just expect a fast pressure away from 1.1. And in particular, they are not going to be happy about telling people to use their proprietary APIs when LTI Advantage has something. They just are, 
You think that these vendors love their proprietary APIs? They actually don't anymore. They really would much rather say, and it has to do with the fact that if they have a proprietary API and somebody like Turnitin shows up and Turnitin goes like, hey, Canvas, why don't you change your proprietary API for me? And Canvas is like, come on. And Turnitin goes like, well, but we won't do it. We won't be nice to you if you don't change your API. And then Canvas is under pressure from Turnitin. I'm just making this example up to change their API. But if it's a standard, Canvas can just say to Turnitin, like, is British because Turnitin is in Britain, bugger off, right? We're standard, you're standard, shut up, right? And so it just means that their, their sort of risk profile is a lot lessened in terms of getting bugged about changing their proprietary APIs. So everybody is motivated to get away from proprietary APIs and guide all of their third-party vendors into using them. From a Sakai perspective, this is delightful because now Canvas will say, don't use our local thing, use the standard. And we'll be like, later they'll be like, well, hi, we, we, we plugged into Canvas, we wanna plug into Sakai. And we're like, well, you already plug in, right? So we don't have to say, oh, you use the Canvas proprietary APIs. Now you should use the Sakai proprietary APIs. And they're like, you don't represent a large enough market share, blah, 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 blah. So this is like great for everybody. And the tool vendors will, will tire of it for a little while, but they won't tire of it forever. They'll be like, oh man, it's so great. I did all my testing with Canvas and I just started up when it worked with a guy. Isn't that great, right? And so, so it seems like it's a pain in the beginning, but it's not. So, but nothing's perfect. So this, this to me is the high level summary of the good news and the bad news. Um, if you'd asked me six months ago, I'd say LTI advantage is hard to implement. Uh, I don't think it is anymore. I think that with this wonderful support of PKI, OAuth2, Java Web Tokens that is in almost every language that we've come across, um, it's not that hard to take sample code, even if it's in a different language, and debug your own code. That's the good news. The bad news is there are going to be a lot of really crappy LTI Advantage tools. The tools are not going, this has been like a, if you've been to my Tsuki talks, tools are the laziest, slimiest, quick and dirtiest, they just want to get LTI in there, and then they just don't care how bad it works. And they will bend it to their commercial advantage rather than doing things that are pretty and beautiful and elegant. And I'm attracted to pretty, beautiful, and elegant. So there's going to be a lot of lousy LTI advantage tools. Sugi is awesome, but you know people don't want to do the hard thing. So another very complexifying factor that we have going on here is that the commercial vendors, Sakai and Moodle, don't fall into this category quite so much. Um, the commercial vendors are sort of doubling down on their sassification of their product offering. Uh, you saw a recent uh, post from uh, Phil Hill, uh, illiterate, that says that you know they're moving Blackboard is moving people to their SaaS offering. And so I, if I was running those companies, I would run away from SaaS, but they're not. They're doubling down on SaaS. Everybody thinks that SaaS is the answer, desire to learn, Canvas and Blackboard. They can't, they're going to be more SaaS rather than less SaaS. And I, I think actually a Sakai strength is that we don't force the SaaS in the model. With this LTI 1.1 and this public-private key, um, all the vendors like Blackboard and Canvas and Desire to Learn, they want to have one public key for all of Desire to Learn across all clients. So what happens is, is that they hoist the tool registration above the institution and they register the tool at a canvas wide for all institutions or a blackboard wide for all institutions. So what we thought of is the URL key in secret. Well, that's gonna be done in some developer portal that is outside your control. Now you will be able to say, you know what? I don't want Piazza in my school. But if you say, I want Piazza, those keys and secrets have already been provisioned. And in, on one hand, that's great, right? Because now you just say, I want Piazza, a little tiny school. They're in SAS to make their life simpler, and it's going to be fine. But what if that's not what you want? What if you don't want to sort of be part of this giant one, one size fits all? And so Moodle and Sakai took a very different strategy on this. Not that the satisfaction strategy wouldn't work for us, because if you're going to install it uh, for the whole system, it's kind of like a, a small version of SaaS. But it does lead into transition issues, 
right? Okay. That was not supposed to be on the other slide. Oh, so, yeah. These are supposed to be on the other slide. Okay. This is the part that I need to add here. I need to take that off the previous slide. It's okay. Um, Sakai, and I think Moodle, at least the Moodle's data model inside of their LTI Advantage, allows them to have a beautiful uh, single click transition to take all of the LTI 1.1 URLs that are spread around in their system and simply start launching them as LTI 1.3. And for me in Sakai, if I did a demo, I could show you, I can actually switch from LTI 1.1 to 1.3 and then I can actually switch back to 1.1 and then back and forth because I carefully aligned the data models. Now what's gonna happen for uh, the commercial guys is uh, Blackboard, D2L, and Canvas is that they might ultimately see LTI 1.3 as like there is no real clean transition from 1.1 to 1.3. This 1.3 is using a more SASified. And I'll give you an example, and that is that the user keys, right? So the primary keys in Canvas are unique within institution. But if you're going to use a single um, public-private key pair for all Canvas integrations, then the user ID needs to be unique within all of Canvas, not just all of uh, one school's Canvas, but in all of Canvas across all schools. And so the primary key, and one pattern of SASification, I mean, Longsight uses this in Sakai all the time, one pattern of SASification is you have a separate, you just have software and you have separate databases for everybody. You might share kind of code or app layer, but you don't share database layer. Well, what's gonna happen here is Canvas and D2L and Blackboard are gonna to have to share database layers to some degree because things like course IDs and user IDs have got to be unique across all institutions. So that's gonna make it different, difficult. They can have kind of a legacy LTI 1.1, which is your user ID within institution that you've been using for the past five years at these schools. And then you're gonna have a user ID that's a cross institution user ID. This is not a bad problem to have and to solve but it does make transition difficult. So Premier keys um, in Sakai are not changing. We could change them. We got a transition path. We have put things into the standard that make it so that the Sakai and Moodle uh, easy transition can work nicely. And we, we have put things in to give Canvas and D2L and Blackboard the best chance of a smooth transition. And they're still working on some of that. So, the, the simple thing is, is that Sakai and Moodle sort of made LTI 1.3 look a lot like LTI 1.1. And the other, the commercial vendors are really seeing it almost as a completely new uh, and parallel thing. So this is uh, going to happen. Uh, we've got 20 minutes left for some questions if you have them. Um, I, I predict that the spec will be out publicly for everybody outside of the uh, IMS working group. Uh, you know, those of us who are in deep inside the IMS working group, we've been working on it for a long time, but they don't publish it because we want to make sure that it, once you publish it, it's hard to back it off, right? And in a sense, usually when we publish something in IMS, we don't revise it. We just make, if it's broken, we leave it. And then, so we want it to be as not broken as possible. So that's why it's been a long time that people other than the big schools and the big vendors have been the only ones looking at this. And that's because literally in the last year and a half, we have had at least two major start over moments. Probably if you go back two years, we probably had five start over moments. And so it's just as well that you never saw some of those things from two years ago, because there was a lot of grumpy people that had written a lot of code that had to throw it away and start over too many times. But we can't let the whole market do that. Otherwise, we'll lose all credibility from a standards perspective. I'm very confident that the specs that are coming out, uh, you know, in a month or so, month or less probably, are 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 pretty damn. There's, I'm, I, I was going to say pretty damn flawless. That doesn't mean they don't have flaws, but they're going to work because we could have we could have perfected these things for months longer, and we just at some point had to stop and just finish this stuff up. And so I look at this as sort of like. This is like laying the groundwork for a real next generation digital learning environment. The fact that I don't have to ask myself, does Blackboard support content item or not? And if they do, how do they do it? This fall, they'll just say LTI Advantage, they'll get the sticker. And I know that I can, as from a Sugi perspective or any other tool developer can, can expect that every major LMS 
is going to do this. And so that means that tools will start doing things like retrieving membership lists, making new gradebook columns, sending grades, et cetera, et cetera. The tools are just going to start doing this. And so tools will blossom into far more functional things. Um, it's going to take a while. Like I said, the vendors will probably all be shipping in the fall, uh, by fall. I expect Blackboard will ship in this probably in summer. Uh, I don't. I mean, Sakai. It's already in Sakai 19, but we haven't released that yet. And it, everyone will have to wait to upgrade to Sakai 19. This is too much code to backport to Sakai 12. Um, it just it just isn't worth it at this point. Just go to Sakai 19. What I'm saying though is that in the fall of 2019, we will sow the seeds to a set of tools that we could never have imagined. And that's what I'm saying about or the dawn of the real NGDLE is these tools are going to get better rapidly because they have been frustrated with the limitations of LTI 1.1. They're going to walk into this space where those limitations are gone and these tools are going to evolve in super wonderful ways. And so just watch this space. It's going to be an exciting time. And I'll stop there and uh, see if anybody has any questions. Thank you. I hope everybody's there. <laughs> Feel free to ask questions in the chat or, or over your mic. I, I have this effect on my students. <laughs> if I give a good lecture, no one ever answers, asks questions. I don't, I've stopped feeling bad when people don't ask questions. I feel good when they don't, but you're welcome to, I want you to ask questions. Well, it certainly looks like, you know, we're not going to get many questions. <laughs> looks, looks like you've given folks a lot of food for thought, Chuck. Um, so, if there are no questions, we can wind up there. This yeah. is going to be made. This is going to be made available in the Aperio YouTube channel. So ahead, I know part, parts of this presentation are uh, are quite dense. So you'll be able to work back over it again. But Dave, if you have a question, yeah, please ask it. So Dave's got a question. In the I, think Dave, I think the answer is this doesn't really change that. Um, that's a that's a Sakai feature and how secrets are managed. And that was turned in as a that was a bug that I debated with people and I lost that debate. And it's going to be the way you probably want it. But certainly the reuse of tools between Sakai and other LMSs, but term to term use, that's a Sakai thing. And that that was a that was a security issue that I wasn't comfortable copying secrets across into new classes. I figured that you know I don't want to make it so a course import export sort of copies secrets across. But yeah, and so but I that was just a debate, right? Security and convenience. I kind of fell down on the no, you can't do it. And you know they said, well, if I'm in the other course, I could go look at it. And like so but that that was just that's just a feature feed thing. But certainly the, the, the ability to build a rich tool and make it work in Sakai and other LMSs, uh, that is enabled by LTI Advantage. But that other thing was just a feature of Sakai's import-export and course copy. Laura made that happen. Laura won that argument. Uh, any sense on how other LMSs will handle that course copy? Um, each LMS has a different way of uh, reconnecting links with secrets. Um, and uh, I don't think anybody has really done a good job of it. Um, Canvas tends to have a ad hoc mechanism um, based on the launch URL that it tries to figure out the secret and sometimes it reassociates it automatically. Um, Blackboard has a, like a patching thing. And this, ha this happens also when you import from a common cartridge. You know, how does the secret come in and import a common cartridge? Because you can have LTI links in the common cartridge. And in Sakai, the way you solve that is you set the tool up 
that has the same base URL as the URLs coming in, get the key and the secret right, and then as part of the import process, it sort of it sort of connects them. But this has been a problem from the beginning of LTI and common cartridge as to we can give you everything coming across, but there is a debate about how the secret comes across. I think LTI Advantage in the long run will make this a lot better, in particular because it's not a shared secret, and in particular because the end user be in general won't won't be near the secrets. So these are in Sakai right now you have to be administrator to install an LTI 1.3 tool. And so you'll just be inheriting across the entire system. And so it will work a lot better, I think, um, for for all of them. So um, and then the, the other really good news is is that IMS is uh, starting a work group to come up with effectively what will be a common cartridge too, which then, and we will walk through the auto provisioning and the inheritance and uh, common cartridge two will be the common cartridge that is born after LTI advantage is assumed. And so, um, so Dave, Dave asked the question, should institutions be asking vendors about their awareness and movement toward LTI advantage? Um, I think only in the most general terms. Um, I, you can't comply to it yet unless you're actually inside the deep inside the club with the Slack channel for all intents and purposes. So you can't say, how come you're not compliant? Um, and until we're, we're shipping, uh, there's no real reason to pressure them. But um, if you had a, just a friendly conversation to say, have you been tracking LTI Advantage? And they go, LTI what? Then you could help them learn. Um, and it'll really be more like fall that we're going to put the screws to them and say, here you go. And those screws are going to come not just from you, but they're going to come from the other vendors who are going to say, well, time to quit, time to move, you know, XYZ Piazza tool or whatever it is. Um, Canvas is going to start just pushing, right? And uh, and so it, it won't just be us that are going to push everybody to LTI Advantage, but you're welcome and you should certainly educate people. Any more questions for Chuck? We still have a few minutes. Doesn't sound like it. Thanks everybody for attending. Chuck, thanks again for a super presentation. Be available on YouTube over the next couple of days. And I hope I see you at future Perio events. Thanks a lot. Cheers.